is John Menino with Milton Township and the Township Officials. I'm here today with our House Representative, Tara Costa Howard from the 48th District. How are you today, Tara? I'm doing okay, thanks, John. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here and it looks like you're having a lovely day out there. Uh, uh, you got some, uh, some sunshine behind you. So, and some balloons. I understand your daughter just graduated. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Two graduates in my household, not, not exactly the way we planned it, but we're pretty excited that they're on to the next phases of their lives. Well, hey, um, maybe we can go into that in your, in your past, if you don't mind. What are some of your career experiences you've had which led you to your current role in the Illinois House of Representatives? Well, John, as you know, I'm a lawyer and um, I'm a business owner. And so I've been able to use those experiences uh, for my life to really apply that in, in, in what I do in the House of Representatives. So for me, um, like I said, I, I'm an attorney and I practice in different areas of law. But my time is in, as an assistant public defender uh, here in DuPage County, in the Middle of Division, and then subsequent to that, serving as a court appointed guardian in my dumb, has probably had the greatest impact. You know, my role as a guardian at Lightham um, and an assistant public defender, obviously, is, is to advocate, uh, is to advocate for those who are. So whether that's a child that's been abused or neglected or their family's going through a divorce, um, a victim of domestic violence, an elderly person, um, or even, you know, a disabled adult, um, these are individuals that need to be protected. And as a legislator, that's our job, right? We're here to advocate for our district, for our state, but, and the bottom line is for the voice of the people within our community. Great. Hey, um, Tara, what are the committees that you're you serve on in the, in the House of Representatives and what kind of legislation do you primarily deal with? Sure, well, I actually have the good fortune to serve on a number of different committees. Um, I serve on Veterans Affairs, Pre-K uh, through 12 curriculum and policy. Um, I'm on the Judiciary Civil Committee, Child Welfare, Cities and Villages, um, and the Mental Health and Addiction Committee. I could go through each one of those, but um, some of them are a little bit more self-explanatory. But I would say, for example, in child welfare, this year in particular, we've been really focused on DCFS issues as well as special education issues um, that mirror things that are going on in education. As an attorney in judiciary civil, we've had the opportunity to address statutory, civil statutory changes um, that, that needed to occur, um, even some departmental issues um, with, with even just like the Secretary of State's office, um, things that need to be changed within. Um, and then obviously with mental health and addiction, particularly here in DuPage County, trying to continue to raise awareness and, and improve services um, across the state. I, I would say of all of the committees that I work on, mental health and addiction is really by far the most bipartisan supported committee. We, we get a lot of really good work done um, in a really bipartisan moment of service. I can't agree more with you. And I just interviewed our sheriff, James Mendrick of the DuPage County. And he, is, I think that was his number one, uh, number one concentrated efforts for mental health. And I think he even mentioned you and some other great uh, elected officials helping with that. Well, DuPage is really lucky because Deb Con uh, Representative Deb Conroy from Villa Park is uh, the chair of that committee. And so she, it is something that she has been working on and was able to get the committee formed and has been the chair and just done some amazing things. In fact, our DuPage County legislators, uh, uh, Democratic DuPage County legislators, um, in the budget, in, in the capital plan, um, had worked to uh, get a facility here in DuPage County on the county property. Um, nowhere else, no controversy, on county grounds, um, because it is a need that is so great here in DuPage County that many people just don't realize. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, hey, what township do you represent in the 48th district? So the 48th actually traverses three different townships. I'm just um, gonna say, townships. <laughs> townships, right. Um, so obviously I have Milton Township, York Township, and I have part of Lyle Township. Okay. Uh, what kind of communication do you have with the townships you're currently represented? Well, John, as you know- And I know. <laughs> I, 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 it, it's, 
when I was elected, I immediately reached out to my township um, supervisors and the boards in an yes. effort to really kind of come out because I, I feel, as you know, that townships have really gotten beaten up a lot lately. And I think in a very unfair way, if we really talk about the services that, that the townships provide and really do a deep dive, I think that we, we should be all be able to recognize the important value. And so for me, it's been very important to have um, consistent communication with each of the townships. And, and that kind of morphs depending on what's going on. One of the things that I did this past summer, I should say we did this past summer, was um, we held a property tax assessment seminar with my three township assessors. So Deanna Wilkins, Chris LeVan, um, John Trowbridge from Lyle. And it was, it was well attended and, and it was very thoughtful. And one of the reasons that I wanted to have all three there was because assessments and that process is not just affect one township, it affects all of them. And I, and I just thought it was really important to let people see the types of collaborative work that actually do go on amongst our townships. We definitely see your involvement in Milton for sure. I can, I can attest to that. So we appreciate you and all that you do. Uh, as a longtime resident of Glen Ellen, what are some of the services you've utilized by your nearby townships? Well, interestingly enough, probably not as many as maybe I should have, um, mostly because it was my own fault for not knowing a little bit more. But I really tried hard to kind of, um, as a legislator now, um, again, working with my townships to help my constituents have them utilize the services. Um, for example, we have constituents who have financial issues and we've been able to send them to Milton to utilize those emergency funds. Um, I've done a lot of work uh, with John Valley and again, Deanna Wilkins, um, but, but John Valley in York Township with their senior program, they have a very, and all of our townships have them, but because I think York has the large facility, they're able to run um, a very robust senior services program. They have, um, when they're open, they've had you know hot meals, they do meal delivery, they do a lot of transportation, which I know goes on in all of the communities. But we have done a lot of outreach um, for them, particularly with their seniors. That's great. Yeah, John Valley, uh, Deanna, they, they, those guys are just incredible people and very giving of their time they are it's not a part-time job for them is it <laughs> um, no. hey um with this COVID-19 uh epidemic uh pandemic I should say effect, how has it affected your job and, and you being a, as a representative sorry no it's it, it, um we've had a shift very quickly um my staff still works uh, remotely, although one of my staff members um, can go, you know, goes in a little bit to the office, but we, you know, we, we can't take walk-ins um, obviously because people aren't there. Right. What, what we saw though, was we had to quickly adjust to many legislative proposals that we had, truthfully had to go on hold. And we really shifted into constituent service mode times a hundred. Um, meaning we were immediately working with our food pantries, with our, um, you know, doing blood drives and food pantry drives, because we saw the, the need for services just increase exponentially. Um, working with our schools to, again, making sure students had remote access, that they had food, um, and then, you know, being able to do that um, was what was so important to all of us. Mm -hmm. Assistant Gail has become the, uh, has really focused on the unemployment issues because as you can imagine, we see numerous calls and emails on a daily basis needing help just figuring out that system. And so it's been very much con constituent services until obviously, you know, once May, mid, mid April rolled around, again, that legislative piece kicked in again. Many people predicted there and, and predict there'll be a second wave uh, for this pandemic. Uh, how can local governments prepare for this? Well, obviously, the 
you know, the main one is, is making sure that they're going to have enough PPE. I would say that um, I was fortunate because many of my police departments were really good and at the forefront of making sure that they had that. Because to be honest with you, that, that's what they do, you know. Yes. Um, right. So they were able to immediately shift into implementing policies that they actually already had in place. And, and I don't think, again, I don't think people realize how prepared they, they were. But our cities and villages have to do help do more public service announcements. And I, and I don't want to say help, but meaning that they educating the community about what it's going to look like, um, how this is going to impact our businesses. And then from a business perspective, again, our villages being able to have that public service announcement campaigns. How do we continue to promote, support? What are the things that we can do to help support our local businesses? I'm really proud to be honest with you of the work that was done in all of my communities, um, watching the communities come together to support local business, to support neighbors. I, I, I would drive around town and see, you know, makeshift food pantry sites set up in people's driveway. It was incredible. And that's I think great. that's one of the things that is what it means to be part of strong communities. Glen Ellen has one of the best food pantries I've seen and witnessed. It's yeah. not the biggest by any means, but uh, how uh, organized and, and how ready and available to help the people. It, it, it's amazing that and you're right there and it's it's great well and it, what was interesting this time too is we did a program called senior smiles um having our seniors be in their homes and really not be able to get out there was was tough for everybody oh, yeah absolutely so we partnered with our local school districts um, and the kids were amazing. They wrote letters, they drew pictures, uh, District Lombard uh, 44, uh, they had artwork made into cards, and mm. a way that too, that, that we partnered with the townships, so Penny at Milton Township, yes. get that out to our food pantries, and so those went into the bags um, for people at our food, you know, that needed, just needed that extra there. Um, York Township did the same thing. They took the hand notes, uh, the, the cards that were given to them from District 44, and they actually addressed and sent them out. And the whole point was to show people, one, we need to make people smile. We need to focus on something that, that brings joy. And it's a way for, for people within our community to help and participate with their neighbors. It's amazing. And uh, I know that you really frontline that one and uh, really appreciate that. Uh, a lot of people uh, love to get personal stuff in the mail, and boy, that, that did make a lot of people smile. This is the, the, one of the final questions, but it's a long one. <laughs> uh, the nine townships of DuPage have seen massive increases in the amount of people utilizing their services as a result of this COVID-19. However, we are when it, you know, only one county. As someone who works with other representatives throughout the state, what does the situation look like in other counties? We're not alone. Um, despite what maybe some people think or feel, we are not alone. And, and John, I don't have to tell you or your colleagues, um, when the state went 736 days without a budget, our townships, once again, were the last line of defense. And my sense is this is exactly where many people turned again. And this happened not just here in DuPage, it happened across the state of Illinois. I participate and adopt a legislative program with the Farm, Illinois Farm Bureau. And last week I had a call with my farmers from Cass Morgan counties. And they too talked about their counties, their townships. And despite what maybe you see in the newspaper of the numbers of cases, the impact is felt far and wide across the state, whether it's a supply chain issue, whether it's an unemployment issue. Um, and, and so that is where our townships have really had to step up again and fill in these gaps for a lot of people. I can't thank them enough for the work that they've done. Um, and again, it wasn't even what do we do, it's how quickly we can do it. Yes, yes. Well, I just want to thank you, Tara Costa Howard, for being here today as our representative of the state uh, and joining us. In the future, would you be willing to come back on and give us more updates? Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. 
Well, thank you for joining us today. I'm John Menino with Milton Township and the Township Officials of DuPage. I would like to personally thank Tara Costa Howard for coming on today, answering all the questions, and looking forward to speaking with you again. Anytime.